Hi everyone, welcome to Moms on a Mission. Um, I'm on a webcam today, so the quality is not really that good, but I'm having some problems uh, with my video camera. So, um, this is going to be a bit of a dance. Um, I hope that y'all can hear me okay. I don't have a separate mic for my computer. So I'm just going to use the um, little microphone on the earbuds. But today, what I want to talk to you about is sin. Like, I want to go over in the Bible what God uh, says is sin, what he describes as sin, and um, that way, if you don't know what sin is, or you don't understand what sin is, you hopefully will by the end of this video, and we'll be able to see why we need a Savior, who is Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and Messiah. But I want to go ahead and I want to jump in to um, Exodus. Sorry, I'm not used to the, the webcam. I'm actually going to use it for um, Exodus 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days and you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gate. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, which means he made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. And that was the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses on the mountain. And now I want to flip over to, sorry, I have a ton of bookmarks um, in my Bible. Uh, bear with me one second. This is Matthew 22, and I'm going to be starting with verse 35. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So, these two commandments right here, if we love God with everything that we have, with our whole entire being, mind, body, everything, um, then we'll be able to actually walk in the second commandment of loving our neighbor as ourselves um, because the love of God will be flowing through us. Mm -hmm. We draw near to him and he draws near to us. Now I want to go over and I want to read from Romans. And this one is going to include uh, one of today's hot topics, which is um, homosexuality. And I'm not here to um, specifically call anybody out or anything um, that is homosexual. Um, I am coming to you with the Word of God, and the only reason that I am mentioning it um, outside of some of the other sins at the moment is just because it is so prevalent right now. I mean, the topic, it's just, it's crazy. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that all they want to do is harp on homosexuality being a sin and the LGBT um, but they fail to go over all the other sins so we're going to read from Romans and see if we can go ahead and um, 
plan to find out. Uh, this will be Romans 1, beginning at uh, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible, incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil, uh, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So, that right there was a lot in Romans. That it's extremely clear. It's very, um, it's very black and white that homosexuality is a sin. Um, and so are all of these other things that I have read about sexual immor immorality and, um, you know, backbiting and wickedness and maliciousness and, uh, you know, coveting somebody's um, things or wife or um, the uh, boasters and, you know, disobedience to parents. And so all of these things um, that I've read are actually sin. And I know our society likes to say that, um, let me set this to the side. Our society likes to say that some things that God actually calls sin, because they are, our society likes to say, no, those aren't sin. Um, and that is because we are born into sin, and so our sinful nature wants to stay in sin. We, we don't want to, um, you know, have somebody tell us what to do, and um, we don't want anybody to point out that what we are doing is wrong. Um, deep in our conscience, uh, you know, I think we know um, the difference between right and wrong. But once you know what sin is, then we should try our hardest to steer clear of it. Um, and that includes homosexuality. And um, I honestly don't care what society says because I'm a Holy Spirit filled believer in Jesus Christ and I believe that God's word is the absolute truth. Um, you know, once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, like you you know. I mean, you know it's the truth. There's uh you know, there's no way around that. You just know it's the truth and the Holy Spirit convicts you of all your sins. So um so, no matter what sin you are struggling with, um, because none of us are perfect, there, there's only one that's perfect, one that's infallible, and that is God, that's Jesus Christ, that's the Holy Spirit, um, you know, God is three in one, and so, since the homosexuality is such a hot topic, I would just like to say to you that 
if you didn't know before watching this video that homosexuality was actually a sin, um, you do now. And so just know that if that's the thing you're struggling with, um, repent. You know, call out to Jesus and repent. Um, and trust in Him. You know, the sin that, that I struggled with the most was uh, sexual immorality. And once I answered the call of Jesus and surrendered my life to him and he filled me with the Holy Spirit, I mean, like I didn't even, I didn't even understand what it was to have a relationship with Jesus until that moment. And it is so beautiful and it is so wonderful and it's not going to make your life perfect. It's not going to make your walk perfect. But... What happens is you realize your sins and you want to live a different life. You become a new creature. You, you become, you are changed in that instant. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you know it. There is no denying it. It's, it's not a, oh, was I filled with the Holy Spirit or not filled with the Holy Spirit? There's none of that going on. You, when God moves in, you're going to know it. So, um, just trust in that. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful relationship. It's a, it is a, love relationship with our Creator, with our Savior, our Messiah, Yeshua, and it is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, before you get saved, you just kind of live in your sins, and you think that they're really great and everything, um, because that's what the devil wants you to think. You know, he wants to present everything as, you know, candy. So to speak, um, you know, so we'll keep coming back or like a drug and we'll, you know, keep coming back to it. But Jesus can deliver you of that. And I can give it to you, the relationship with Jesus Christ is so much better. I mean, it's so far beyond better than living in your sin. You will never, ever, ever, ever regret ever regret answering the call of Jesus, the free gift of salvation. And he loves you and me so much that he died for us. I mean, there's no greater love than that. He died for us. I mean, it was a horrible, horrible, horrible death. He was tortured. He was tormented. He was nailed. And I mean, like big, huge nails, not, you know, he, he was nailed to the cross. He was... It was just a terrible, terrible death that he died for us to take our sin, to pay our penalty. And I want to encourage you because Jesus is the only way to the Father. He's the truth, the way, and the life. Um, there is no name under heaven for which we should be saved except for Yeshua, Jesus. And um, if you are not saved, I want to encourage you, I want to urge you, to get faith, because I'm not going to sugarcoat this. There, we you have two options. We we all have two options. And we can either have eternal life with God, our Creator, that's full of love and peace and joy. And I guarantee you these things because I have actually met Jesus in person. But that's going to be for another video. Um, or eternal damnation. And that's your choice. That's our choice. We can either choose Jesus because God gave us free will or we can choose Satan who runs the world. And that's why it's in so much chaos because God, the Father, is not the author of chaos. He's not the author of confusion. Um, that is the devil. That is Satan. So I just want you to know that no matter what sin you're struggling with, whether it is homosexuality, whether it's sexual immorality, whether it's adultery, whether it's lying, stealing, or whatever it is, just know that you can go to Jesus. You can have your sin forgiven, and you can start a new life. A better life, a life filled with light and filled with love 
and a solid relationship with the Creator. So um, I hope that you'll think about this. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and end it here with this. I mean, I could go on for a very long time, but um, you know, I just felt it in my heart that I needed to. Uh, well, I say in my heart. My heart's deceiving. In my spirit, I felt in my spirit that this was something that I needed to go ahead and touch on today. And I just want to know, let you know that God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. And he doesn't want to see anyone perish. And neither do I. So I don't care what your sin is, how deep in that sin you are, or you think you are. If God can save me, he can save anybody. He can save you. So um, come to Jesus today. God bless you. And I hope the Lord uh, gives you peace.